friends, I want to welcome you to Church of the Good Shepherd here in Oswego, Illinois. My name is Pastor Steve Good, and we're so glad that you are able to be with us for this hour of worship. Our, our singers and musicians are contributing to this service as well. And I want to share a few announcements before we begin. This is the first Sunday of Lent. A few days ago, we celebrated Ash Wednesday with our brothers and sisters in Yorkville at Trinity UMC. And uh, this is the first Sunday now of Lent. Uh, so I want to remind you that we have a couple of adult studies going on Sunday mornings at 930 in the meditation room will be one Lenten study led by Janet McCarty. And then I will lead a weeknight study that will begin on February the 26th. That's a Monday at seven o'clock in the gathering room. Uh, however, the other uh, four sessions will be on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. And it is the Reverend Adam Hamilton study, the new curriculum called um, uh, Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. So again, that first class will be Monday night, 7 p.m., February the 26th. We are also uh, in the Oswego area planning a ecumenical World Day of Prayer service, a prayer for peace in the Holy Land in particular. Uh, this is written by Palestinian Christian women and organized by the World Day of Prayer organization out of New York City. It goes all around the world. And so we will uh, have to announce later the specifics of time and place, but it will be Friday, March the 1st. Our historical committee at Church of the Good Shepherd will be making a very special presentation on Sunday, March the 3rd, uh, right after the second worship service. Uh, so it'll be, you know, around, around noon. Uh, and this is going to be on the history of the sanctuary windows. And they did a wonderful job putting together a color a booklet, which will be for sale. Uh, and uh, we're going to celebrate and go through a little bit of that history. And then a luncheon will follow. If you think you can join us, just email us. Or if you're here, there'll be a sign up in the gathering room. And that'll just help us in our preparation. So thanks to the historical committee for putting all that together and a lot of hard work that they did, I know. Uh, finally, thank you everybody who participated in the luncheon yesterday uh, after the memorial for Jeffrey Bonham. Uh, and I know that Melanie and the family so appreciate it. They, they felt the, the warmth and the love through this meal and the sharing of it. So thank you everybody for coming together to support uh, the Bonham family in their time of need. Friends, let us now uh, prepare ourselves to come before the Lord, to worship, to give thanks, to give our prayers, to hear God's word, and to center us. Let us hear this brief verse of scripture. I share this from the gospel according to Matthew. And this is especially fitting to begin our season of Lent. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Friends, let us now worship as Cheryl Todd offers us the prelude.
call to worship. To thee, O God, I lift up my soul. O my God, in thee I trust. Make me to know thy ways, O God. Teach me thy paths. Let us worship God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. lost, but now I'm found. It's blind, but now I see. T'was the grace that taught my heart to fear. It's grace my fears really it is time to share our joys and our concerns and if you have a prayer request be uh, feel free to email that to the church office or text or call me and uh and we'll be sure to include those prayers i want to start by lifting up laura galindo and we ask for her continued healing as she recovers after surgery i uh, want to lift up dave ralston who is also recovering after surgery uh, following a car accident. Uh, Dave is, is improving every day. He's at Hillside Care Facility in Yorkville. Uh, we pray for Pam Dodson as she's still recovering, of course, from hip replacement surgery. And uh, we also want to lift up uh, Dave Holdeman, who has uh, been uh, battling COVID. He's, he's feeling much better these days, but uh, still not able to get out. And so we pray for Brother Dave and for his needs during his time of, of isolation. And so as we lift up uh, uh, these brothers and sisters and, and ask for God's healing ways, we ask, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I mentioned the World Day of Prayer. Uh, let us this day also pray for those who find themselves in, in situations of violence, uh, whether it is domestically in their own homes or in their communities or uh, whole nations, such as Ukraine and Palestine. Uh, and, uh, and, and we just want to lift up um, uh, a prayer for peace uh, and that the Lord may, may help to... Uh, turn around and, and empower those who would be victims from the oppressor and help them to find their freedom and security. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Friends, we have a few birthdays from our congregation that we are aware of and that I would like to lift up uh, among us today. And uh, so we say uh, happy birthday to Jacob Rodriguez, to Bob LeClaire, happy birthday to Adam Farrow. And as we lift these up, we give thanks for each of their lives, and we ask that the Lord would bless them in this coming year of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, friends, this is an important part of the service as we silently come before the Lord and intentionally uh, share what is on our hearts and our minds with God, uh, prayers for ourselves, for our own uh, uh, growth and maturity in the faith, uh, prayers for uh, uh, forgiveness for ourselves and for others, uh, prayers of thanksgiving for our blessings, and prayers for the well-being of others, intercessory prayer. And as we do this, know that our Lord is already listening and ready to respond in love and mercy. Let us continue to pray. Gracious Lord, we come to you this day as we begin uh, our 40-day journey, remembering Jesus' own journey to Jerusalem, remembering his 40 days in the wilderness, uh, knowing that we ourselves are on our own journey to your heart, Lord, and, and we ask that you would... Uh, Send your angels to minister to us, just as you sent the angels to minister to Jesus in the wilderness in those 40 days. Lord, let us uh, lean upon the power of your spirit. Let us be able to hear your word through scripture and help us to discern what that means for our lives today. For there are eternal truths to be found in the scripture. Uh, that are um, meant for all time, and uh, not only for the time that it was written. Help us to have the wisdom to differentiate, uh, that we may uh, uh, translate and interpret uh, responsibly and with your wisdom, Lord. Gracious Lord, we do pray for one another. We pray for healing. Uh, we pray for comfort. We pray, gracious Lord, for the fellowship, uh, for those who are lonely, for the strength of community. For you yourself, our community as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And because we are made in your image, thus, at our most basic, we are connected to one another. We are community as well. And it is in our relationships with others, in our relationship with you, that indeed we are um, who we are created to be. And it is where we can find contentment and joy. Lord, help us to do just that. Just as Jesus himself said that he came, that his joy may be complete in us. And it is in the name of Jesus that we come to you and pray, saying to you, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Prayer of Confession Have mercy upon us and hear our prayer, O God. We have failed to live in the light of your covenant. You set your rainbow above us, yet clouds of unbelief darken our days. Distrust wells within us, fear, not hope, is our watchword. Your beloved bids us foul, but we are slow to obey. In mercy, renew us and bring us to life, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear those words of assurance of pardon. Remember that Christ died for our sins once and for all, that he might bring us to God cleansed of unrighteousness. Baptism now saved you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember your baptism and live in new life, assured of forgiveness through Christ, who intercedes on your behalf.
Our first scripture reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 1 through 11. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Armenian was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number. And there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord and the Lord of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction. Our gospel reading today is from Luke chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for forty days he was tested by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. When the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world, and the devil said to him, To you I will give all this authority and their glory, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil led him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him, until an opportune time. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many thanks to Shar Momich for being our liturgist today and helping us with the leadership. I want to share this sermon with you today, my friends, and I entitle it Evil's Kryptonite, Spirit in Scripture. So what comes to your mind when you think of the number 40, uh, especially in biblical terms, 40, I know that that's already giving you some thoughts. Uh, you know, we could think about the rain and the flood that Noah and his crew endured for 40 days, and 40 nights. Uh, we could think of Moses, 40 days of fasting up on the mountains when he received then the Ten Commandments. Uh, it took the Hebrew people, 40 years of wandering in the wilderness to search for the promised land, the land of milk and honey. We know that King David and his son and successor, King Solomon, both, each of them ruled for 40 years in the land of Israel. And, of course, we definitely recall Jesus' 40 days of Fasting, that was our uh, one of our scriptures today. His trials in the wilderness of Judea, which began his public ministry. And, and, and Jesus' earthly ministry ended after his resurrection when he lingered for 40 more days, teaching his disciples more about God's kingdom before he ascended to heaven. So that's just a few examples. There's other 40 instances in the Bible, but 40 is a very significant number, really, to all communities of faith for, for many different reasons. Now, in the season of Lent, which we are just beginning, uh, began on Ash Wednesday last week, we especially focus on Jesus' 40 days 
of fasting and prayer and, and the temptations he had to deal with in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus opposes and is opposed by evil. It's a reminder that his followers must do the same. We oppose and are opposed by evil. The evil that Jesus battled is the same demonic forces that we slam into today as we seek to be faithful disciples. It's a real force in the world that is always going to be opposed to love, opposed to health, opposed to wholeness, opposed to peace. That's how you can identify evil. The devil often makes great headway when people don't love their neighbor as themselves, uh, when selfishness and greedy ways are, are just too tempting to resist, and when we're motivated to pursue our own wants at the expense of somebody else's needs. Dale Galloway tells a fable about a rural doctor whose phone rang on a, on a cold, rainy night. Uh, it's my wife, the voice on the phone said. Uh, can you come? She needs a doctor. She needs a doctor right away, the voice said. Uh, immediately concerned, the doctor asked, well, can you come and get me? My car is being repaired. Uh, what? Came the sputtering response. Uh, on a night like this? Well, how often we expect from others what we're unwilling to do ourselves. The author suggests uh, we don't have to go to some far off wilderness in Judea, for example, or some other place to be tempted by selfish wants. You know, we, uh, we can stay right at home and be tempted. We don't have to go far at all. It's, it's an attitude that's bound to creep in upon us uh, when we don't have empathy for others, that causes all kinds of problems when we don't have empathy, when we don't put ourselves in the shoes of the other. This was at the heart of a conflict between the Trinity United Methodist Church in Seattle, Washington, and its neighbors. The Trinity, Trinity was pursuing a ministry uh, to the least of society as a way of blessing the living Christ. And they knew that the Bible said, as you have ministered to the least of these, you have done so to me, the words of Jesus. You know, who can be opposed to that, they thought. Well, as it turns out, plenty of people can be opposed. Uh, remember, the devil used good, well-meaning people to oppose acts of love, health, wholeness, and peace. Now, that church in Seattle had observed that their region had a population of people who were homeless and needed some temporary shelter. So they decided to host a tent community, temporary tent community, uh, for 100 people in their own church parking lot for six weeks. Pastor Rich Lang was shocked by the response. Angry neighbors picketed the church, and the city threatened to fine the congregation $75 each day that they allowed the homeless people to camp in their parking lot. Well, our neighbors thought their homes would be broken into, the pastor said. Thought, they thought that children would be in danger and that women would be raped. Uh, the pastor said there was a mood of hysteria in the neighborhood. But just as Jesus entered the wilderness full of the Holy Spirit, so the body of Christ was strengthened by that same spirit. That congregation and that particular body of Christ held firm. Eventually, the city of Seattle backed off its threat to find the congregation when the mayor's office was deluged with emails from angry constituents, uh, uh, angry that the city was opposing the church helping the homeless population. Tent City came for six weeks, and it left again without incident. And by the end of those six 
weeks. Now, this is the wonderful part. Many neighbors ended up breaking bread with those people who they once had feared. Uh, it, it turns out, reflected the pastor, that Tent City did more than 5,000 sermons could have done to redevelop the mission of Trinity United Methodist Church. As they say on TV, don't try this at home. Uh, don't try this at home. That is, unless, uh, 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 you know, unless you operate on the strength of God's spirit and not on your own strength. Don't try this at home unless you are guided by the Holy Scriptures. Let's look at Jesus. Now, first he entered the wilderness with eyes wide open, not at all naively. He knew what he was getting into, but knowing that the battle that he was engaging in was no cakewalk. He did not foolishly jump into his 40 days of prayer and fasting on a dare from a buddy in some bar. Uh, no, he was called to this by God baptized by water and the Spirit, and having a full awareness of God's presence with him. Jesus prepared himself to follow God's will, come what may, even in a time of great personal struggle. Notice that each time the devil tempted Jesus, the response was not a knee-jerk reaction, uh, but Jesus responded with the Bible as his answer book. Each time from the Hebrew scriptures in the book of Deuteronomy, Jesus responded with confidence up to the temptations laid out before him, even when the devil used the, the scriptures himself. So the first temptation here was uh, Jesus' response. People, um, people need more than bread for their life. His response to the second temptation, you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then finally, after the third temptation, do not test the Lord your God. So to be grounded in scripture is to always know and be confident in what direction your life is going. When you are in the wilderness and relying on your compass for your route, uh, the compass will help you to find true north. That's what compasses do. Uh, once you have determined true north, then you can be sure of where you're going with each step that you take, right? That makes sense. Uh, but what if you don't know how to use your Christian compass that we call the Bible? Well, the fact is, uh, we all need to get more familiar with this guiding instrument, the Bible, whether, whether we're a new Christian or a more mature one. Uh, and that's why the church, in its wisdom, many years ago, instituted the season of Lent, 40 days before Easter, not counting the Sundays. Uh, for those of you who are doing the math, and I know some of you are doing that, um, it's a time to get reoriented. It's a time to renew your commitment to follow a daily devotional routine. And if you don't have a, a devotion to help you, try the upper room. We keep copies in the gathering room that you can just leave a little donation for. Um, if you don't already have a devotional guide, you can find plenty of them online as well. Uh, or let your Christian compass attract you to the reading of uh, one book of the Bible Maybe one chapter at a time. See what that does for you. Perhaps you can use these 40 days of Lent to become more familiar with Jesus' teachings, such as Sermon on the Mount. You know, just focus on the Sermon on the Mount for Lent. Or, or maybe the study of his parables, his stories. You know, you can just focus on, on that. Uh, or maybe just look at the Passion. That is the last week of Jesus' life that leads up to the cross. Uh, Beth Carter from our church tells me there's a, a great 
a great movie playing at local theaters right now that's on the life of Jesus. You may want to check it out. It's called The Chosen, and uh, it's also run on television. But uh, uh, if you want to see it on the big screen, it's also available now. Uh, so whatever you do, go with your natural curiosity and your interest as you peruse the scriptures, because that's where you'll find the staying power. It's something that that draws you in, not something that you think you should be interested in. Uh, you may be surprised, as with a good novel, that you just find it hard to set it down again once you really start digging into it, and you can't help you can't wait to pick it up again. Once you start reading the stories of Jesus, you know, you may end up missing your favorite TV show because you're so engaged in it, or maybe forget to get supper started on time. Uh, while you're reading about the teachings of Jesus or about the passion story, uh, you may suddenly notice your dog before you sitting leash in mouth with an urgency in his eyes as if saying, I've been waiting here for an hour uh, when are you going to take me on a walk now? So if that happens, don't be surprised. Uh, personal Bible study. That can be very inspirational. Uh, many good Bible studies are available if you, um, they, they give you helpful commentaries and life application ideas uh, for some guidance from other people, which is another type of Bible study. I, I, I urge you adults to try out one of those adult Bible studies that I mentioned earlier in the service, 9.30 Sunday mornings with Jana McCarty, or uh, there'll be five sessions with me on the weeknights during Lent starting February 26th. Now, there's other wonderful opportunities to, uh, to engage in our faith in some refreshing ways. During Holy Week, our Seder meal in the Fellowship Hall moves us through the scriptures in a very unique way as we experience the Passover meal tradition that Jesus and his disciples shared together on the night of his arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane. Our youth group will prepare the traditional food with the guidance of their director, Rachel Conover, and, and I will lead the Seder ritual. Uh, then on Good Friday, the next day, we will explore the scriptures with several area congregations as we will meet at the Wellspring United Methodist Church in Oswego on Wolf Road. Uh, and I hope that some of you can be there for, for each of those services. It's so important, brothers and sisters, to be grounded, to be grounded in both the scripture and in God's spirit, or else... Uh, when the line starts to blur between right and wrong, uh, you'll be tempted to convince yourself that, oh, it won't hurt just this once. You know, it won't hurt just this once to fudge the numbers. Um, it, it couldn't hurt to take out my frustrations on the kids or the dog just this once. We'll think it, it you know, it couldn't hurt to, to focus on the bottom line and not worry about what I have to do to get there just this once. It couldn't hurt to leave God's law and, and Christ's love out of my decision-making just this once. Um, when we think we're so dis self-disciplined and self-reliant, um, that's when things go wrong for us. But when we, when we stop relying on Scripture, when we stop being guided by the Spirit, you see how easy it is for the lines to be blurred. When we start thinking it couldn't hurt just this once, uh, that's a thought that the devil wishes that, that we would ponder, uh, but also act upon. However, if we are armed with God's spirit, knowing and obeying God's word, then we have the most effective weapon we need to combat evil, the evil one, both in our lives and out there in the world. Hold firm, my friends. Encourage one another. That's not a side thing. That's a core of what we do. Uh, encourage each other to, to acts of love and mercy. And know that the struggle of faith is worth the pain. 
Friends, let's pray. Oh, gracious Lord, uh, it, is, is, it is a bit daunting to us, just as it was to Jesus, to head into the wilderness, uh, to face these 40 days, um, not knowing what kind of testing and trials will come our way. And so because of that, we, we want to lean upon you. And, and ask that you give us a strong dose of your spirit uh, to be our guide, uh, to nurture us, to strengthen us for whatever it is that comes our way so that we will be clear in our decision making, that, uh, that it is your will that guides us, uh, that you in your word is our true north. And as we follow that true north in your love, we can never go wrong. We thank you in the name of Jesus, whose path we follow. Amen. Now, friends, I want to invite you to listen along and sing, if you know the words, to our uh, Reborn Praise Band as they offer us our final tune, Let Go. Well, my heart has broke like this Since the first time I ever fell in love I wasn't ready to give My heart to you or anyone now I have seen a lonely soul break free And the coldest of eyes would be And it had nothing to do with me So let go What is it that you're holding on You know there's more love There's more love here than you've ever known So just let go Fall in your arms and cry Jesus And then you'll fall Oh 
what is it that you're holding on? Cause though there's more love, there's more love of me than you've ever known. The girl's that call, fall in his arms and bind these us. And when you fall in, you fall in fast, so you need a friend. And in the darkness, you will see the light. Thank you again to Shar Momic for being our liturgist today. Thanks to our singers and musicians for beautifying this service. And, uh, and as we continue on these 40 days of Lent, uh, may we indeed be led by God's Spirit and God's Word through the Holy Scriptures and elsewhere, that we may receive the peace of Christ this day and forevermore. Amen.